Good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Um, my name is Shauna Challenger. I was trying to put on my video, but I don't think I can. Um, but yes, my name is Shauna Challenger. I am the Osha Islands Conservation Program Coordinator with the Environmental Awareness Group or EAG. And I'm here to talk about some of the sustainable tourism activities that you can do. Um, this picture is um, the sustainable tourism areas, Great Bird Island, and a very popular tourism area as well. Next slide, please, Joelle. So first off, a little about the EAG, who we are. We are Antigua and Barbuda's oldest environmental NGO. So completely non-governmental, non-for-profit. And we've been at the forefront of conservation work for over 30 years. Our tagline is for the benefit of people and wildlife. And that simply represents our aim to have a society where everyone cares for value and values the ecosystems and wildlife of Antigua and Barbuda. And we believe that environmental work should not only be worthwhile, but interesting and satisfying with a hint of adventure. So I will put a note here to say that our focus is conservation. And so we're not a, really a tour guiding company. What we do is um, conservation work, science and research that supports the species, habitats and ecosystems where these ecotourism activities can take place. So the first one that I want to talk about, next slide, Joelle, is bird watching. And I am a big bird nerd and unashamed. I love being a bird nerd. <laughs> um, and Antigua, we are spoiled. We have over a hundred, well, we have 147 species here in Antigua with over 39 birding hotspots to choose from. You can um, touch the arrow again, Joel, so the video can start to play. And McKinnon's Pond is our largest and has the most species. And McKinnon's is actually near to the Sandals Resort, near to Trade Winds, so it's in walking distance for a number of resorts in that area. And they're able to see wildlife like these black neck stilts, great egrets, snowy egrets, um, and laughing gulls, I think I see one in the back. So you're able to see a number of birds up close and in their habitat. And so when you go with the EAG, we do offer some bird watching tours where you're provided with a guide, ID card and binoculars. So I will keep coming back to the fact that a lot of the things that we do is science and research. And so as a bird watcher, you're not just, you know, watching it for the fun of it. You're also contributing through citizen science. And so we're recording what are the birds that we're seeing. And, you know, you never know, you might record a new species for Antigua, you know. Uh, next slide. So other than bird watching, we also have turtle tours. And so under the EAG, one of our programs is the Antigua Sea Turtle Program, which has been running for about a decade. And Antigua and Barbuda is actually home to, well, we have four that forage in our waters and three that nest actually on our beaches, namely the Hawksville turtle, green turtle, and leatherback, which are all critically endangered. And what we actually do is monitor, again, back to the science, what we actually do is monitor the nesting females when they come up on the beaches. And so you're able to come along with our team, as you can see our turtle monitors in the picture at the top. Um, and this is a leatherback that's actually nesting. And so you're able to see, you know, you're able to experience the whole shebang of looking on the beaches for the animals looking for the trawls when you actually see a turtle the excitement that oh my gosh they're so big I can't believe it's here waiting for her to start laying and then you know doing the measurements tagging her um, checking the eggs to see that she they're all okay um, and even if there's a nest that's supposed to come up your guests may be able to see a hatchling release which is the cutest thing ever um, on the sunrise and so there are a number of opportunities for that you can play the video Joelle I actually took this video here um, just on Sunday, <laughs> outside of the Pillars of Hercules. Like I say, we have a number of species. This one is a green on the right. Actually, we named quite a few of our turtles. This one is Riley. Um, and we do quite a lot of science for this. So again, it would be not just, oh my God, these turtles are cute, but my guests are also here making a difference. You know? You can go to the next one now, Joelle. So yes, last but not least, my babies, the offshore islands. 
And this is very special to me, as my position would say. And with the uh, offshore islands, Antigua and Barbuda actually have 51 of them, with majority of these offshore islands and keys laying in our largest marine protected area, the NEMA, or Northeast Marine Management Area. And in this area, you'll find a number of islands that are actually globally recognized as an important bird and biodiversity area. And that is because they are a model for conservation success that people actually replicate to this day. In 1995, our critically endangered Antiguan racer snake was reduced to only 50 individuals. It was actually declared extinct twice accidentally. And then they found 50 of them remaining on Great Bird Island, which this picture is of. And through our work getting rid of invasive species, so rats and mongooses, etc., we were able to bring the um, snakes back from 50 individuals on one island in 1995 to now over 1,200 individuals across four islands. And so every month, our team actually visits these offshore islands to conduct monthly biosecurity checks. So putting down rat bait, making sure there's not getting back on the island and wildlife checks as well. So monitoring the snakes, the birds, etc. And so for the offshore islands, the hot spots for activity are usually Great Bird Island, Hell's Gate Island and Green Island. And there are a number of things you can do. The video that was playing is actually a new attraction that I should say is coming up on Great Bird Island. The owners have put in green infrastructure to show you know, that there is a possibility for sustainable tourism through green infrastructure and conservation at the same time. And so this it will be ready for and so it has nature trails at the top of the ridge, which is where I took this picture at the top. You can see whales, at, with a lot of patience, whales. <laughs> you can see snakes once it's not too hot because they don't like the heat just like us. You're also able to see a number of nesting seabirds that are up top there. And of course, you're able to do snorkeling in the coral reefs that surround the area. Next slide, please, Joelle. So just lastly, I want to wrap up with some tips for being a green tourist in Antigua and Barbuda. And so first off, use reusable bottles as much as possible. Antigua and Barbuda has been leading the environmental trail regionally through our banning of plastics and styrofoam. But you know, the, the water bottles, they can kind of still cause an impact. So using reusable bottles as much as you can definitely helps. Playing your part by respecting the closed season. So a lot of tourists will come to Antigua expecting to have their lobster lunches. And <laughs> unfortunately, if you are coming between May and August, lobster and conch will be out of season and it will be illegal to be consuming them. And so just be mindful of these times of year if we're, when your people are coming. Supporting local business owners. So making sure that you're patronizing a local restaurant, um, or a business owner who's selling trinkets or that kind of thing. Do not feed or harass the wildlife. So on the right, we have the beautiful Antiguan racer that I was speaking about. I should also put a note that our snakes are completely harmless. There's no poison, there's no venom. Um, they actually just put out a stinky smell like a skunk. That's their defense against humans. Um, but please, when you see the wildlife, take pictures and just that's it. Do not climb on top of the turtles when you see them. Do not poke them. Just respect the nature that's there. Do not stay from the trails. And this is very important for us, especially on the offshore islands, because a number of the nesting seabirds and shorebirds that we have are ground nesting and their eggs are made to actually blend in with the ground. And so you have to be very careful where you're treading. And that's why we have the trails to make sure those kinds of things don't happen. Check for invasive species before visiting the offshore islands. And this is a very important thing because we do so much work to make sure that these islands, I should say EAG, we have over the past 30 years, we've eradicated 17 offshore islands of these rats and mongooses. And so we do quite a lot of work to keep them that way. And so checking bags, checking boats for rats, ants, seeds, etc., because they can have a harmful impact on our native wildlife. And then a shameless plug, donating to local conservation groups like the EAG and Wallings Nature Reserve. We are the ones on the ground who are doing these conservation, important conservation work to make these areas aesthetically pleasing, thriving with wildlife and attracted to tourists. And so because we're all very nonprofit and dependent groups, there's a little way to make sure that things stay that way. And so you can go to the last slide, Joelle, and that is just my thank you for listening.
I am, I hope you can play the video. This actually I took off of the offshore islands as well. There's some Spanish grunts and Dr. Fish among some Acropora coral. Um, and yes, I hope everyone has enjoyed the presentation. Thank you so much for listening and see you when the pandemic releases us. <laughs>